Hi, hello. My name is Sanja Milosavljevic and I'm going to be your host today. Uh, today my guest is uh, one lovely, lovely, beautiful lady from Jamaica, uh, Dania Beckford. She is a brand communicator and body positive advocate. That's hello, right. Dania. Thank How you for you? your time. Thank you for uh, accepting my invitation to participate in this project. It's my so, pleasure. Yeah. So can you tell us something about yourself? Can you introduce yourself to the people in Serbia and in the world? Okay, so I'm Dania Beckford, but Sanya calls me Dania, which is fine. She gets to do that. <laughs> and I'm from Jamaica. Um, I'm an entrepreneur here in Jamaica. And what I like to call myself a 50% entrepreneur, 50% employee, because I'm also the director of entertainment in the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. So my business is that I own a fashion label that does resort wear because Jamaica is a tropical country so we wear a lot of swimsuits and cover-ups so we do resort wear but we have a niche market or niche market is full-figured women and one of the reasons why I chose to supply resort wear for full-figured women is because even though we live in a tropical country a lot of the fashion items that we have here are not for full-figured women and Jamaican women are curvy women so that seemed to be a problem to me I had many problems growing up finding a swimsuit that I love to wear to the beach and I lived two minutes from the beach so I decided to sketch my own swimsuits I got them made I wore them put them on Facebook at the time and other full-figured women started to ask me where did I get those so I was like you know I made them and they were like so can we get some and I'm like can you pay for it and they're like yes and a business started so that's how we started um, I call myself a body positive advocate because even though my fashion label is specifically for full-figured women we don't discriminate against any woman at all so as long as a woman is confident in her own skin is confident in what she's doing then that's all that matters perfect because sometimes um i have a problem in finding a swimsuit or any kind of a, a any piece of a wardrobe uh i'm skinny so uh, it doesn't matter if you're a skinny or you're full figured. We actually share the same problems. Exactly. So, Women's yeah. bodies are very varied. And we have always been taught either to not love what we look like, love what another woman looks like, which may not be what you look like. And so because of that, it causes a lot of problems. And also the fashion industry have their own objectives when it comes to what a woman's body is supposed to look like. And because we all love to see women on the runway and in the magazines, then we end up having these ideals for ourselves that we possibly will not or may not fit in. No, oh, I know, I can hear you. Um, so tell me, um, how long do you run your business? Where do you place your products? Do you use, uh, you said you use uh, social media, but do you have any kind of a website, e-shop? How do you um, ship your products? Can can people in Serbia or somewhere in the world uh, buy your, your swimsuits? Okay, so we have been operational for four years. Um, as a matter of fact, this the entire story I told you about how we started also happened out of the fact that I had multiple fibroids in 2015. And I was working at an advertising agency at the time because I'm actually, my education is in marketing and public relations. So I was on the brink of doing my master's in integrated marketing communication. I was working at an advertising agency at the time and I had this operation to do. So I had to take out like 15 fibroids and I did the operation and I just didn't feel like my body was ready to go to work again and so that whole story I told you about me designing the swimsuit and going to the beach a lot to get healing and posting it happened in that time when it was supposed to be such a, a, a challenging time for me you know so I took those four months and I started the business now we were uh, fully on Facebook and Instagram at the time and that's where we found our home so it's not actually a physical store we are on Facebook we are as Broadtail Fitkinis the name of my brand is Broadtail and it really just means a big bottom 
that's what <laughs> bar tail means to us <laughs> yeah um <laughs> we're on instagram at official broad tail and our website is actually now in construction because we have expanded we have evolved into a semi-entertainment company so mm-hmm. carnival is a caribbean thing right so it's where we have revelers go out in the streets and you're in costumes and you're dancing in the street for an entire day now this tradition started in trinidad and tobago and it's it's throughout the eastern caribbean but it has become really popular in jamaica for the last 20 20 years so the last three years since i started my business one of the bands here in jamaica called zamaica which is what our country was called before we changed it to jamaica they approached me to say you know full-figured women are full in jamaica we have so many curvy women and because of how skimpy the suit the the suits are for carnival a lot of full-figured women you know they'd look or they they would wear a t-shirt on the road but they wouldn't be in full costume like an average sized woman so he approached approached me to say what I get into making carnival costumes for full figured women and we started to do it three years ago so you know we've been involving like that and because of evolving like that because a lot of persons from North America and throughout the Caribbean region comes to Jamaica for carnival the business started to grow which is when we're like okay we need a we need a we need a website and we need to be shipping so the website is now under construction we do ship to our customers who are mainly in North America do you uh, Canada and um, the Caribbean because that's where the Jamaican diaspora really is and we do so through DHL DHL is a partner of mine for shipping perfect can you tell me something about the state of interpre- entrepreneurship sorry uh, in Jamaica and especially uh, with a focus on uh, ladies running their business uh, is it Uh, is it developed is it underdeveloped do you get any help from the state uh, to start your business are there any kind of uh, uh, hubs accelerators Uh, and basically what's the attitude um, towards uh, uh, entrepreneurship entrepreneurship or uh, in whichever branch uh, they choose to to work in okay so entrepreneurship traditionally was not something that was taught in schools however in the past 10 to 15 years where you know have millennials coming up and they're more entrepreneurial minded um it has been taught in schools now um it's not where it's supposed to be here in jamaica but it's also very much encouraged right now and we have a lot of female entrepreneurs not only in the formal sector but also the informal sector let me tell you what i mean by the informal sector so mm-hmm, please um unfortunately in jamaica there are a lot of uh, single mother families families and so the mother usually has to not only take care of children but also provide for them and that has given way to very innovative ways of taking care of your children whether that being selling snacks on the road um, having events during for entertainment so there's a lot of entrepreneurship going on with mothers in the informal sector what I must say about the formal sector for for entrepreneurship and women we have we don't have have a gender issue in terms of not being able to access the same type of resources that a man would be able to access it's Mm -hmm. pretty much across the board if it is that you want to start a business as a woman however what we do have like many other countries is the fact that there's always not a lot of capital to start businesses um especially if you're in the creative industry which i would be in because of fashion um there are not a lot of investments immediately for things like that um what the state does have that i can speak to from actually my office at the ministry of culture gender entertainment and sport is that for for industries such as film animation music um creative production there is an incentive that you can actually get so if it is that you need to ship equipment from abroad here in jamaica if you are approved for this incentive by applying through the ministry of culture the entertainment division then you can actually get what we call tools of trade duty free um there is perfect yes perfect there is also 
we have the developmental bank of jamaica dbj and what they have done they've had a couple of competitions that you can pitch for to get an investment for your for your business it doesn't have to be a creative industry business it can mm-hmm. be any business um they are also they do a lot of grants so if it is that you don't sometimes you don't get cash but you're able to get grants or through their resources they're able to provide you with things like a grant to get your website done or to get some training we also have an agent agency called the jamaica business development corporation so what they do is that they do a lot of training and um incubators for new entrepreneurs to as a matter of fact i gave a presentation pre-covid about um branding your company because remember i told you that my my experience and 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 my knowledge is actually in brand communication so they have these two-week accelerators where you're able to go through branding your company if it is packaging they go through that um, marketing your company so there are a couple of things here that can equip you as an entrepreneur but also because our economy is tight it's constricting you know so there's not a lot of money but there is a lot of training um, available Mm -hmm. and do people uh, actually use this kind of help are they interested in starting and running their own businesses? I find that a lot of young people are now interested mm. in starting or running their business. Not, inter- not interested or interested? Interested. Ah, uh-huh, okay. Yes, so a lot of young people are interested in running their own businesses. I find that the generation before mine, they were content with finding jobs that they would stay in for years and just be there growing in that job. But persons from my generation and even below, I I actually, I, I... I'm amazed by persons who are actually younger than me because they want to start businesses in high school. Anything that they love as a hobby, they want to start a business out of it. I think it's because with globalization, they've seen other young people in other places doing it. And so they want to do it too. And a a lot of them are not really interested in working for anybody. They want to work for themselves. So I'm, I'm interested to see what the next 10 years will look like for Jamaican entrepreneurs. Oh, nice. Um, the two of us, we met in uh, in America. Uh, we spent three weeks together on IVLP program, exchange program. And, uh, Where I we was actually, freezing and you, are, you were fine. Because uh, <laughs> you were used yes. to the cold. <laughs> I was, yeah, I am used to cold. So you, do you remember we, um, we went to visit uh, Grammen Foundation, Grammen Bank? Uh, do you think that the small grants or s- small loans would help people to easy start their business or just invest in some, uh, I don't know, equipment and just start doing something? It would, would that definitely be an answer? Help. It would definitely help because let me tell you something, even though it is easy, the process as in administration to start mm-hmm. a business is not hard in Jamaica finding money for that business is difficult it is easier to get a loan to buy a car in jamaica than to get a loan to start a business because the banks are saying that well if it is that you can't pay your monthly payments we can come back for the car but if it is that you're not making money in this business (laughs) what do we have so um a lot of banks are not willing and ready to just give you money to start a business you know even if you show them the best projections so Mm -hmm. i think that having a a bank which i think is what our development bank of jamaica is trying to get to that would be able to give you cash for your business because let's face it small businesses need cash flow so i'm Uh very grateful for the training and the grants but small businesses need cash flow so we need more places that would be able to offer that money and invest in um entrepreneurs Mm, good so now we are we are all facing the same problem covid-19 and it's something that is happening almost at the same time in the whole world so what's the what's the situation in jamaica um and can you tell us just can you share where were you uh when you first heard the news or i don't mean the exact the exact moment but where oh, were oh, you i remember the exact moment Uh, you remember <laughs> you actually remember, I remember. Uh, so what, what what was your first um reaction to that 
Okay, so we got our first case here in Jamaica on March 10 of this year. And um, I remember I was actually in Montego Bay, which is one of our resort cities. We have two cities here in Jamaica, Kingston and Montego Bay. And I was looking at a location to host a seminar about these fiscal incentives for people <laughs> in the creative industry. And I was saying to my senior director, you know, since we're in Montego Bay and it's all about the beaches, let's get a venue that they can actually see the beach and all of that. And then there comes news on everybody's phone via one of our um, newspaper companies on the app that we got our first COVID case. Now, we all knew that this thing was looming. We were watching it on TV and we were like, we're really just hoping that nobody brings it here because nobody in the country had it. It would have had to be an imported case and our country heavily relies on tourism because, you know, mm. we sell our beautiful beaches and our music and all our creative inputs. So we know that it was inevitable that it would get here so that's where i was um i believe that a lot of people thought that it would be just something that came and went um we locked down our country pretty quickly so uh, maybe 10 days after um that first case we completely closed our borders so there was no tourists coming in and our country has estimated that we were losing three million dollars per day by not having tourists coming into Jamaica now. One of the, uh, tourism is so linked to all our other industries because mm -hmm. it's linked to our creative industry because not only do we sell our beaches and our beautiful landscape, but our music is very important to the world because we gave six genres of original music to the world, including reggae and dancehall, which a lot of our tourists come here for. You've told me how much you love Bob Marley. Of and course. <laughs> and can you tell us? Fact, segue. I am in the Harry J recording studio, and this studio is like 50 years old. It is one of our legendary, iconic studios here in Kingston, and it is where Bob Marley recorded his first five albums. So all those wonderful songs that you know and love from Bob Marley, they were recorded right here. Right now, feeling like an artist <laughs> being here. And importantly, it is now owned by his daughter, Tara Johnson, and she manages it. She's the managing director. So we're keeping the women empowerment alive here in this recording. <laughs> Perfect. Right. So I was talking to you about, you know, the impact that it has had. So we had to shut down our industry, our entertainment industry, which is big for us. It is estimated that per year between our concerts, all the events that we have, tourism, it is a $90 billion entertainment industry that we have here in Jamaica. Um, and now suddenly zero. It's, it's zero. Um, also our agricultural sector, because of tourism as well, our agricultural sector started to really suffer because they were not able to supply the hotels with agricultural produce. So everything has been at a standstill. We have since we were locked down for almost six weeks, um, we reopened because mm -hmm. our government decided that we could not continue to be losing the money and uh, we reopened at the beginning of july um there are some who would say that it was too quick of a reopening because since then we have had a complete spike in our cases so when we reopened we were at about 500 cases and now we're at 1065 and in the past week Every day we've had about 19 cases per day in the past week. So there has been a really spike between last week and this week. Mm -hmm. um, we so are they going to, 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 are they going to take any uh, new measures or uh, put you in a lockdown it's, again? It's a very precarious position because two days ago, our prime minister also announced the day of our next election, which is on September mm -hmm. 3rd. So usually when it comes to elections, you can't put a country on lockdown because there would be campaigning there would be um, persons visiting your house telling you to vote for them um, there will be people have to be able to get out of their houses to vote on September 3rd so I don't foresee a, a complete lockdown um, happening 
pre-September 3rd. However, I do believe that because the cases are spiking, he's going to have to probably put in a stricter curfew. So mm -hmm. our curfew now is from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, before this, it was 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. And at one point when it was the complete lockdown, it was 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. So I'm thinking that in the absence of a complete lockdown, he's going to uh, make the curfew times a little bit more stringent. So how did that affect people, ordinary people? Um, you're locked down, you cannot go to your work, you have to shut down your business. How did that affect? Did you just accept it uh, or did you have any kind of a reaction to that? Um, Not just you, but I don't know, your know. friends, your colleagues. Um, let me just. Or did they just accept it as, okay, that's what we have to do now? For uh, largely persons accepted because they saw what was happening with other countries um, when you looked at the internet or you watched your t the news on the TV. For example, at that time, Italy had the most cases, America, which were very close to geographically, and also because a lot of our diaspora resides in America, we saw what was happening there. So we knew that we had to lock down. Um, the trickle down effect. Um, has been very great on the regular man or regular woman with the smaller businesses because they depend largely on larger businesses to supply them. And, and generally, with the smaller informal businesses, the money that you make in a day is what you use to feed yourself and your family. And a lot of Jamaicans do live like that. So it has been very difficult, especially for my 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 colleagues in the entertainment industry you know it has it the complete shutdown no no events no festivals no no music um it 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 has been a really stressful i mean everybody is trying to go on online right now and have some sort of live happening but they're not earning particularly from those types of things um i have an example my best friend she has been wanting to start her business forever in events um production and management and she started her business in january and then there was a lockdown in march and she invested uh, almost five million dollars in buying equipment because she's doing event rentals as well equipment and everything and it has just been a standstill so it has been difficult on persons but there has not been um protesting because persons do understand i mean persons in the entertainment industry they had to lobby a lot for a phased reopening which started mm -hmm. Um, partially at the end of July, about July 19. So events have started to happen, but it's it's just with 250 people. Um, since then, it has constricted because 250 people really can't make no money for nobody in no event. Oh, of course. It was really oh, for stress relief because it, it's not for profitability. Um, but... Uh, we're yet to see what will happen after the elections and how this entire thing plays out. I feel like a lot of persons are frustrated. So at the beginning, they were scared wearing masks, um, sanitizing and, and doing the social distancing for the past couple but of weeks. But do you do, sorry, but do you do you do that now? Here in Serbia, we still um, practice social distancing. We wear masks. We uh, wash our hands regularly. So what, what's we, the situation? We have been doing in it in Jamaica. Jamaica too, but I think that because persons were locked down for so long, sometimes you don't see them doing the social distancing. For example, Jamaica, we're a very touchy feely type of country. We like to touch you, we like to hug you, we we you, we like to dance close to you. That's how we are, and so it has taken quite a bit of um, PSAs, public service announcements on TV and on radio for persons to remember that you know COVID nineteen is still here. Don't take it for granted. Continue to be sanitizing. Continue to wear your mask. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So it, it's still a learning curve for people. But I think that with mm -hmm. the spiking cases, persons are actually learning that we need to do this thing in order to flatten the curve so that Corona can just go away. Mm. Did you panic? Did you have any kind of uh, issues with that? Like you have a baby and you're a mother, you're responsible for not just for yourself, but you're responsible for another human being. Were you stressed were you depressed were you in a problem you have you run your own business but you still work somewhere else what, well, what was your 
Mm -hmm. To be very honest, I didn't panic because um, I was always watching the media to see what was happening. I knew it would have gotten here. I knew that I had to protect my child. So I didn't even start him out at the nursery. He's 15 months old now. Um, I didn't start him in a nursery because I was like, you know what? I'm watching what's to see what's going to happen with this um, new virus that we have. So he has a nanny that comes in every day. When I started to actually worry is because the nanny is from an area that had to be on complete quarantine before the rest of the country was locked down because they were having so many cases over there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had to call my mother that lives in St. Anne about two hours away from me to come to Kingston to to take care of my child for me while I work because when I open up my computer all he's there saying is apple apple and banging on my computer I don't get to work so my mother came up and she had to help me and I was saying to myself at least I had an option I, I could call my mother to come and help me what about other people who don't have that option you know it re really had some people worried um, I, I spoke to some other women entrepreneurs who even though I'm an entrepreneur, I have a job. So I was continuing to get a salary, you know. So I had to stay grateful because there were other persons mm -hmm. like my best friend who she has no salary to get because she just dived into entrepreneurship. So it was a different kettle of fish for some person. So whereas I knew I had options and resources at my fingertips that I could tap into, I was still worried about nobody was coming to my yard because you were not going to give my child COVID. Um, <laughs> it was never going to happen. As a matter of fact, he now hates his car seat because we haven't been going anywhere in a car. So he's like, what is this thing? So I'm wondering how am I going to integrate my child with this whole car seat situation when we start going back on the road? <laughs> So there are other things that happen, <laughs> but I, I haven't been panicking. I've been trying to stay very calm, um, trying to keep a level head um, and just and just um, doing the protocol so that we can stay as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and tell me, like the thing you, you told me about your friend and she invested a great deal of money into business that stopped uh, before it any started. Before it started, well, it's really a tragedy. Um, how did your government react? Uh, did, do they have any kind of incentives? Do they uh, help uh, people just to, I don't know, they, uh, they don't have to pay taxes or they don't have to pay the rental space or uh, what kind of help did your government and policymakers Uh, offered for the people that run their own businesses. Okay, so I must give them um, some credit because quickly mm -hmm. they came together with a care package. Um, mm -hmm. it, the package, the whole thing was called CARE. It's an acronym mm -hmm. that I can't remember right now, but it, we, we refer to it as the CARE package. And what happened is that they had relief in different areas for different types of um, persons. So it was largely for the mm -hmm. tourism sector. You had a lot of persons that were able to benefit from that, but you had to be registered having a, what we call a tax registration number, a TRN number. And you had to, um, if you didn't have that and you are a business owner, you had to show proof that you were paying your taxes so it was also a way for the government to ensure that everybody is not paying taxes um so they had yeah Some. <laughs> and a lot of entrepreneurs here especially in the entertainment industry um, the tax situation is you know kind of <laughs> So that was a way for them to get information while help helping the entrepreneurs. My ministry, Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, we weren't heavily included in that care package in the beginning. And so we had to lobby for our creative practitioners to get some sort how of relief. Come, sorry, but how come y uh, your ministry wasn't included in, in that uh, um, care package? We have a cultural thing we need to fix here in Jamaica where mm -hmm. we think that the creative industry is so informal and we use it all the time for for stress relief for the people and to bring tourists to the country but we don't value it as much as we should and so because tourism was shut down and it it filtered into so many other industries the package was the care package was heavily focused on either tourism or agriculture now our minister olivia grange who is a woman 
she had to lobby hard for us to have some sort of impact in giving incentives to the creative industry and to date the money has not yet been dispersed but we have come up with 40 million dollars for creatives to be able to get some sort of incentive mm -hmm. good oh that's very that's very hard for the especially for the countries that are um in tourism sector, I think that's uh, uh, our tourist tourism sector in Serbia is basically shut down. People don't have to. Uh, people are just shutting down their businesses and their offices and uh, restaurants got turning. a hard hit too. But of course, right, of course. But what so, happened? Uh, when you mm -hmm. you do your pasta business? I do my pasta business, but. Um, I had to transform a bit, like restaurants don't work, but still people have to eat. So I just turned to um, physical persons instead of uh, instead of restaurants right. or I don't know some other kind of uh, yes. some some other type of uh, buyers. What so, has given uh, rise in Jamaica is that we mm -hmm. weren't big on delivery here in Jamaica. So mm -hmm. with COVID nineteen, you had a lot of delivery places popping up. I know. I spoke to Fang from China. I told you, and she said exactly the same thing. Uh, like they had courier uh, services earlier, uh, previous pre uh, COVID nineteen, mm -hmm. but now she said that now they have. I don't know that uh, that's the uh, industry that is blooming actually. Yes. Logistics yeah. and delivery yeah. services. So, how much did uh, did small businesses had to transform uh, to adopt new business models or to um, work harder on their e-commerce platforms? Or how did they change? Did do they value their customers and buyers more uh, than they did earlier? What I think I think I think they have um for sure as I mentioned to you restaurants had to reimagine mm -hmm. how they operated so you have a lot of curbside pickup and a lot of deliveries happening now almost everybody is a beer right now one time in Jamaica you couldn't find beer everybody is a beer right now you know so really that, <laughs> yes. So that business has really boomed um, or starting to boom. Um, also with virtual setups, so corporate companies now, because they realize that all their meetings, because Jamaica, we were big on meetings. We love to meet. And we like to meet in nice places like hotel ballrooms and stuff. <laughs> so Same because here. nobody Same is here. meeting. <laughs> nobody is meeting like that. Um, a, a persons who are able to provide a virtual corporate setup um, that has started to be a feature of reimagining how your business work. A lot of entrepreneurs are really relying on their website right now because there there are no walkings happening. Um, so so those are, I think, for, for Jamaica, the, the gastronomy industry, the culinary industry, is the one that I've seen that has been transformed the most. Mm -hmm. Do you see any light at the end of the tunnel? There has to be. What do you think when you're, of course, but what do you think when the when, when will Jamaican uh, economy recover or start to recover? You said you had elections on the 3rd of September. Do you think that's the uh, D-Day or when do you think the economy will start to recover? And what are the steps we have to make to recover the economy? It, for me, based on how I see the trajectory of things happening, especially with the spike that's happening with cases right now, I don't mm -hmm. think that we are going to be recovering until 2022. And mm -hmm. so that's an entire year from now. At, at the beginning of COVID, we were estimating that eh, maybe this thing will pass by October. Um, but especially for the creative industry, because we heavily rely on events and or music and culture pushing our economy. Um, there are no real big festivals that are going to be happening until the end of next year to 2022 because and even if these festivals start to happen they have to be reimagined because for two reasons. One, without a vaccine, persons are still scared to be in a crowd. Um, mm -hmm. Without a vaccine, 
persons who are actually hosting these big festivals that we usually have have to put in so much more resources that they may not be making a profit from the events that they used to make a profit from so it has to take a lot of reimagining um what i think the government has to do we in the very near future like pretty close after election we have to do another lockdown is my is my estimation in order mm-hmm. to control the cases because what's happening now is that even though there are a couple that are imported it's starting to have community spread which is what we don't want because then it's harder to be able to control it and to contact trace we have persons who are working in large organizations that have in large buildings that are work close together that have to be shutting down because one person has covid19 and you're not sure you have to be testing everybody so when you have that type of community spread it's time for a lockdown again in this lockdown i believe that the government has to reimagine how it is that one they're going to assist entrepreneurs and businesses to not fail because uh, small businesses is a lifeblood of countries you know as much I as I know I agree I agree as much that's, as that's they're not true. always um noted for it it is the lifeblood of a country's economies and without them the economy will suffer so i think a lot of policies will have to be um created in order to ensure that these businesses don't close and um mm-hmm. especially i keep harping on the entertainment industry because it's so important to us because it's so inextricably linked to tourism that we we must find a way through more testing through better management of persons coming into the country to ensure that we don't put our citizens at risk. But do you think that uh, uh, that maybe you can postpone the elections for some other time? That's Because not going to happen. So September, uh, is it is it not possible or? Do you have only one day in four years to do the election? No, no. Because if you... We don't have one year in four years. Okay, so actually, constitutionally... I'm joking. I'm joking, I know. of course. But <laughs> I know. <laughs> constitutionally, the election must happen by February 2021. Uh-huh, okay. Um, at the beginning of the COVID-19 entering our country, our country was lauded by other country leaders to say that we did well in containing it. With the spike happening, um, or Prime Minister, in my estimation, because I'm a brand communicator and I watch the PR, he is mm-hmm. losing PR traction because the spike is happening. Also, we have had a number of corruption cases over the past four mm-hmm. years, and he's losing credibility. So if I were a politician, as bad as it sounds, now is the right time to call it so that you can be over it, so that you can put in strategies. But as a mm-hmm. citizen, I don't think that it's the correct time. But I guess it's between what's right and right -er. <laughs> I, uh, I know we had a similar situation in June this year and we had two spikes actually. We had one spike and then we thought that uh, everything is going to be fine. But then we had the election day and then we had another spike. So um, it's just the experience from our country. Yeah, uh, I know. Uh, okay, so what's the... Do you ever think that you want to go back to, I don't know, December or I don't, February 2020? Would you like to return to that innocent uh, time? Because for me, it's the, the, the innocent time. Now we have to be uh, more careful, more cautious. Uh, we are wearing masks, sanitized, whatever. We don't even trust our neighbors. So uh, would you return to that period of time? Or do, <laughs> or, or do you just want to embrace the change that this is going to bring us all? Um it's a bit it's twofold for me so in mm -hmm. february we were celebrating reggae month um mm -hmm. it has been one of the most successful reggae months you were supposed to be here in jamaica for bob marley's I birthday celebration i in know february 6th. 
So it was a very happy time for us in February. You know, we were celebrating our music. It's 50 years that our music has been um, given to the world as in reggae music. And so it was a great time for us. We we're in celebratory mood. So I would love to get back to that. Um, however, I do believe that for whatever reason, everything happens for a reason. Um, mm -hmm. I do believe that we needed to have a reset. Is this the type of reset that I imagined? Never. Um, but I also believe that a lot of other industries will emerge out of a crisis like this. Personally, my my mantra mm -hmm. is is find the find the opportunity in the crisis. And so with all the conversations I've been having with fellow entrepreneurs, that's what I've been saying. What can we do out of this crisis that will allow us to either find, have a new skill, um, make our businesses better or make our lives better? For me, I've become a more patient person. I was never a patient person. I've been praying for patience forever. Um, and what I have realized is that patience is not just waiting. It's how you wait. And so I have been mm -hmm. just trying to upgrade myself with trends that have been happening in fashion and in marketing so that when I reimagine my company, because ain't nobody going to no damn beach right now. No beach. Mm -mm. They have locked down 30 beaches here in Jamaica. So a lot of persons are not buying swimsuits. Um, but in this time, I have created new styles. I have been talking to people about having a virtual fashion show because I wanted to have Broadtail Fashion Week this year that never clearly worked out and is not going to work out for the rest of the year. But it is pulling out of our minds different ways of doing things. And I also feel that even for my entertainment industry here in Jamaica, maybe the big festivals will not happen but i think that a new crop of of event promoters will come out of this maybe small intimate is what we're supposed to be doing maybe it's a different maybe or boutique hotels with smaller persons and the villas that were complaining that the bigger hotels were taking up everybody it will have other people emerging and i feel like when the chips fall I'm hoping that not a lot of my citizens and citizens around the world die but i i know that something good must come out of it Mm, I agree. I agree. So, who would say we we came we come to an end of our conversation? I felt like it was uh, two minutes really talking. Quickly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what would be your message to to the world? What would you like to share with people here in Serbia and in the rest of the world? Other than listen to reggae music. Listen to reggae music. That's the that, that, that's common sense. That's basically common sense. We all have to listen to reggae. Okay. Well, my lesson to the world is that find 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 the opportunity in the crisis. Um, there is always a way to emerge stronger out of situations. Um, reimagine how you do things. I think that this period has pushed us in our brains because we were probably too comfortable with the way the world was with all the challenges that were happening and every day we were going about our normal business and then one day we got up and the entire world is facing the same thing which is probably also a uniting factor to say that maybe if it is that we put our, uh, away some of our classist tendencies or racist tendencies or inequality tendencies and, and just try to make the world a better place through going something together, we will actually be able to reimagine it and, and do it. And one very important thing, Sanya, is that reggae music has always been the heartbeat of my country and also one of the types of music that gives you healing during times of challenges because it was born out of a time of, of major challenges in my country. So um, while you reimagine your life, listen to reggae music. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate that you uh, woke up this morning at five o'clock uh, <laughs> Jamaican local time. Yes, because you're uh, my girl. I would do it for you. You were the first person to offer me a coat and scarf when I was freezing in Washington and pregnant. So I would do anything for you. I, I've never forgotten it. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, uh hope if you if you want to start the similar thing in Jamaica uh 
I can help you with all the experience now I have. So I, I think that it's a wonderful project that you've been doing. I want to congratulate you for doing it. And it really has inspired me to talk to some women around the world too about what they have been facing and how we can overcome it together because the future is female, right? I don't think the men know. The future is female. Yeah, it is. It is female. Thank you. Hugs and kisses from, from Belgrade. From Jamaica. Ciao. Bye.